Hey there, Commanders. Today we have the largest offering in my Zero Grind AX series. Meet the Chainsaw, an anaconda build with no reputation, engineering, tech broker, or rank requirements. This is a bit of an outlier as Zero Grind ships are concerned, mostly due to the significant price point at about 550 million credits. Calling it a Zero Grind ship with this much money involved is a stretch, but keep in mind that playing through a complete port defense operation with damage on all interceptors nets more than 100 million credits. The Anaconda is one of my favorite multi-role ships in Elite Dangerous. With the right kit and enough patience, this ship can be effectively configured for anything you want, provided there's a landing pad large enough to take you. The Anaconda does come with a few drawbacks that should be noted when constructing a build. First, it's the second slowest and least maneuverable of the large ships, only outperforming the Type 10 in these categories. Without engineering, it's difficult to get the whole armor and reinforcement up to a level that can endure longer fights. Hardpoint positioning also means that pilots need to keep the nose carefully centered, or the ventral hardpoints will lose line of sight. The cockpit canopy is massive. If an interceptor gets above you and fires, it's likely to blow out in as little as one volley from a high-level interceptor, even with dual module reinforcements. Core internals are pretty straightforward. Armor is spec for military-grade composites, offering the same hull boost as the other armor variants, but at a lower cost. Thargoids deal absolute damage, so messing with armor resistance does not impact survivability. For ships this large, military-grade composites are especially important because your larger cross-section makes it easy for hostile ships to get direct hits. The power plant can be 8A or 8B rated. Both module types can power this build, as defined here. But as upgrades become a factor, the 8A reactor starts to become essential. Even without engineering or guardian weapons, we are going to be pulling a lot of power to run some important internal systems. Without engineering, good thrusters are also essential. So this build calls for an 8A package. B-rated can still be made to work on budget builds, but the Anaconda is just maneuverable enough to realize a notable difference in speed and turn rates. Engineering anything but an A-rated module for combat operations is not advisable on this hull, since the Anaconda is going to need every millinewton of Delta V in combat. Note that when you do get to engineer this beast of a ship, you are not ever going to be able to outrun an interceptor. Clever maneuvering can get you out of a few hairy situations, but getting caught in open space by large hostile interceptors is likely to result in an explosion or a high wake. The frameshift drive is set up for max performance with size 6A hardware. B-rated kit can get you by on a budget, but for travel purposes, the Anaconda really likes its A-rated kit, especially without a fleet carrier to haul it around. This makes for a great foundation to which upgrades can be attached later on. Size 5A life support is an essential piece of hardware for all combat ships, though again, B-rated can be adequate for those short on funds. The power distributor is size 8A. The Anaconda won't have perma-boost until after this gets engineered, but it will have very stable pip management, with the weapons and other internals. There won't be any need for twitch reflex-based pip shuffling. This size A distributor will allow for slow, deliberate power management. 8A sensors are likewise advisable to help account for slower speeds. This provides excellent insight into the surrounding area, with room for engineering when blueprints and materials are available. The 5C fuel tank is not altered. After engineering, the Anaconda gains enough power for high-density shielding. However, this build assumes no engineers, so we avoid the extra power demand in favor of extra armor and support utilities. We're stuck in an awkward middle position between being an effective damage tank and a workable cold orbiter, so strategy needs to shift accordingly. The size 7 internal bay houses a repair limpet controller, the biggest and bestest available. Since we don't have shields, the next best thing is the ability to repair hull damage, both for yourself and your friends, or fellow open place strangers. Thankfully, this module does not require allies or acquaintances to be in a wing in order to work. Each limpet repairs 450 absolute hull integrity, a healthy figure that can work its way through meteor hulls much faster than a multi-limpet controller is capable of. 
A size 6E cargo rack provides limpets to feed the controller. This mandatory concession occurs any time a limpet controller is employed. 64 tons of limpet capacity ensures longevity over the course of battles, especially in areas without the ability to resupply these limpets. Field maintenance units are often helpful in fights against the Thargoids, since this foe excels at perforating key internal systems. This module has saved my bacon in several encounters, mainly by eliminating the need for an emergency reboot within planetary gravity environments. This one is size 6A. In order to support a 6AX hardpoint loadout, we need the size 5F experimental weapon stabilizer. This is a fairly power-hungry system, but the Anaconda has ample headroom to justify using it. All other optional internals are hull reinforcement packages, except for the military internal and a single size 4 optional. These are reserved for a size 5D and size 4E module reinforcement package, respectively. Four gimbaled size 3C enhanced multi-cannons make up the core of this build's offensive capability, and are responsible for dealing primary damage. These size 2 optionals are acceptable for mission-specific applications, and can carry additional multi-cannons, AX flak launchers, or enhanced AX missile racks. The size 1 hardpoints are fitted with two turreted beam lasers for damage against shields. These are typically engineered with long range and thermal vent, or with shield boosting capability when the time arrives. For now, they are basically placeholders. Utility mounts are going to be a bit wonky, on account of the absence of engineering. A shutdown field neutralizer is mission critical for port defense, as is an enhanced Xeno scanner to feed target data to the gimbaled weapons. The rest of the utility slots are hard to fill. Heatsink launchers are helpful, though for this build, you will not typically need more than two. With engineering and the availability of additional power, shield boosters are a common choice. For now, fit what you feel like, or leave them empty, as they will have minimal impact overall. Flight performance is somewhat lethargic, not uncommon among large vessels before engineering. As with previous Zero Grind builds, this ship is not much more powerful than a typical NPC ship, so you need to be careful picking battles and managing your resources. Alone in open space, the chainsaw struggles against Cyclops and Thargon Assault. The fight needs to go perfectly your way in order to assure the kill, making this prospect less reliable. The chainsaw is dependent on friends, whether human or NPC, to help disperse enemy ships and draw attention away between fights. Around a port, the chainsaw shreds scout ships faster than a Type 10 is typically capable of. Its maneuvering speed, while slow compared to the Federal Corvette, is still faster than its Lacon competition, enabling a more aggressive flight style that can bring pain to more distant threats. Superior fire control and standoff distance, provided by gimbaled weapons, mean that interceptors and scout ships can be engaged from farther away. Combined with the Anaconda's strong centerline offense, and you have a mixture that lends well to fixed and gimbaled weapons as needed. The hull remains a key weakness to carefully monitor. With raw integrity of about 3300, the chainsaw does not like to be focused down by any interceptor, though it does take a while for the damage to add up. Engaging as part of a group helps divide out incoming damage that is more easily managed by the repair limpet controller, especially if you're helping to repair smaller ships. Caution is advised when attacking mid- and high-tier interceptors, as their more powerful weapons can easily erode hull integrity. Slow travel speeds mean that venturing beyond docking request range of a defensive port is not advisable. Taken together, the chainsaw is a powerful platform with more nuanced requirements for experienced pilots to consider. It's a good starting point, though ultimately more vulnerable than a similarly fitted crate or chieftain. With a near 25 million credit rebuy, it's an expensive loss that puts more emphasis on patient and concerted engagement, and deliberate retreat should things go wrong. Push the envelope too far, and a rebuy screen becomes very difficult to avoid. Still, this ship is a great starting point for players experimenting with large ship AX combat. Several of its core internals are transferable to other large ships if needed. I expect that most commanders who have enough credits to put this together will ultimately have a few engineers available. Upgrades add up quickly on this build, with the most impactful being Dirty Drive and Armored Power Plant Engineering. That's all I have for today, so I'll catch you all later.